Good afternoon friends. I am Dr. Divya Verma Gakhar. Welcome to Gurukul live lecture series. Today I am going to talk about stock market investment. Previous two lectures also I have devoted to stock market investment where we have talked about that how to invest in stock market, the basics, what is, what is capital market, how to invest in the capital market, various terminology related to the capital market, risk return relationship, how to decide that how much risk you are ready to uh, take and what are the macroeconomic factors that affect the stock market. Now today we are going to talk about that how you have to invest in the stocks like designing your portfolio and then what kind of various strategies that are there for stock market investment which includes value investing, contrarian investing and investing for the long term doing fundamental analysis and technical analysis. So today's lecture would be devoted to that. Now talking about uh, the stock market, so as a beginner to the stock market, basic rule of investment is that anyone who wants to start with investment in the stock market, that one should invest early. One should start investing early, one should invest regularly and also invest for the long term. So these are the three basic rules which we will keep in mind while we are investing our money. For beginners, all those students who are uh, who are interested in investing in the stock market, who want to start with the stock market investment, for them, there are a few tips which I am going to share now. Like one should get some basic knowledge. So one, everyone who wants to invest in the stock market should not invest in the stock market just like that. You should acquire some basic understanding, various books and uh, online mediums are available to understand about the stock market. So that should be uh, read through that. One should understand the risk tolerance level. What kind of risk tolerance you have? How much risk you are ready to take? It depends upon what is your age group, what uh, profession you belong to, how much you understand about the stock market and about other investment avenues, how much returns you are expecting from the market and uh, what, is, so what is your risk capacity, what is your income level from where you have generated the funds to invest in the market all these factors affect that how much you are going to in how much risk you are ready to take in the market now buy any stock which you know about and start investing some little amount so for beginners one tip is that you should start investing in any stock uh, uh, whenever uh, you want to start with and that stock can be something which you know about so if you know about certain company so you have studied about that company, you are working with that company, you have some relatives who are working in that company, you have some friends where you have been associated uh, with him in that company. So whichever company you know about the maximum or you are using that particular brand and then you understand that particular brand. So if you want to uh, in start investing, start with a company which you really know about. If you do not know about any company, then you should acquire certain information about the company before you invest your money so that you have that sense of ownership with that company. Invest small little amounts. As a, as a young investor, as a beginner investor, you should start your investment with small little amounts. So whatever small amount you can, you are ready to invest, even if it is 2000 rupees, even if it is 5000 rupees, you can even start your investment with that amount. So for that purpose, you have to have a DMAT account, you have to uh, open uh, your, uh, you have to fulfill all the KYC requirement and then you have to start with the uh, investment through the online medium or through your broker with the, with the help of your broker, you can start investing the money in the market. Be a long term investor. Because you are a beginner, you do not understand that uh, what can be the ins and outs of the market, but you want to remain invested so that in the process of investment, you will start learning things. So you should always be a long term investor. So choose a good stock, a good quality stock, a good company, which has a promising future, which is uh, very good in terms of the performance so that your uh, you do not have too much risk and then you keep yourself invested for some period of time and start looking at the market because when your money would be invested in the market, that's the time when you will start looking at the news, at the information about the stock market and about everything else which can affect the stock market and your company's stock with greater interest. 
So once you will have small little investment in the stock market uh, already been invested, then your interest will develop. So once this interest develops, then you keep on exploring about other companies, see which stocks are growing, how the market is moving, how much is the volatility in the market, what is the effect of macroeconomic factor. So all this learning will come in phases as uh, you will start your investment. So first stage when you are investing your money for the first time, you should always invest with a purpose that as a long term investor, because then you will be able to minimize your risk and then you will be able to uh, safely invest and learn also uh, about the ins and outs of the market. Uh, another thing which a lot of students and a lot of people have their in their mind that you know there is a lot of brokerage which you have to pay. So brokerage which has to be paid on the stock trading, one thing it is paid on the trading. How much you will buy and sell, number of times you will buy and sell that particular uh, any any stock, you will have to pay brokerage and that brokerage is very small amount. Because you are a small investor, you are a, a new investor, your amount of investment will not be in uh, crores of rupees. So uh, the amount of brokerage you are going to pay will be very little. So there is no point restricting yourself entering into this market just because you know somebody has told you that you have to pay brokerage also. So it is very little amount. Another uh, important tip which you must understand as a beginner investor is that you have to diversify your investment. Whenever you are investing money, you must diversify. If you are investing, let's say, 10,000 rupees in the stock market, you must invest it not in one particular company stock, but you must invest in, let's say, two or three company stock as a beginner. And then uh, invest little amounts in two, three sectors. So those uh, you can differentiate uh, uh, with the companies belonging to different uh, sectors or and you should invest in. So all your money should not be invested in one sector and all your money should not be invested in one company. It should be a group so that whenever one uh, company is performing better, it will give you good returns. Another stock, if let's say has, uh, you know, started showing a downward trend, then you want, uh, you can, uh, your losses will be adjusted with the portfolio. Another thing is that one should control the emotions. Now, psychology, investor psychology and irrational investment behavior plays a very dominant role when we are investing in the market because stock market is a place which gives you a lot of uh, stress, let's say, because if you are entering the market, if you are listening to news every day because the market is highly volatile, the market is uh, affected by a lot of information which is coming from macroeconomic factor, from international factors, from what is happening inside the company, what is happening in the overall uh, economy. So all of these factors, apart from that, uh, the herd mentality which operates in the market, that also affects. So whatever is affecting the stocks, if you are convinced that you have chosen a good company to invest your money in, then you should not worry about that how the market is behaving. So never take uh, impulsive decisions in the stock market, never go by your emotions of greed, fear or let us say overconfidence or uh, you know uh, you are overwhelmed by because your friends are buying certain share you want to invest in those shares. So if you keep yourself as a balanced person while taking decisions, then uh, the chances of that you will lose money in the market are very, very less. Now, these were some little tips about uh, the uh, in uh, the for the beginners to start with the investment in the stock market. Now, for sure, as an investor, when you are ready uh, that you have certain savings and you want to start investing, then it is always a good choice to design a portfolio for yourself. Now, what do I mean by designing a portfolio? Designing a portfolio means that as a uh, as a person who has taken the decision for taking uh, for uh, investing your money, you have money in your saving bank account, which is generating you returns of let's say four percent. Then you have fixed deposit, which is giving you returns of six, seven to eight percent. There is public provident funds and other uh, government schemes where you want to invest your money and the money is giving you uh, 7 to 8% or 9% returns uh, in terms of a time deposit. You have other avenues of investment like real estate investment which is uh, going to, which requires huge amount of money will going to give you returns over a long period of time. So uh, and then there is stock market which is considered to be highly risky and then there are products like equity shares, derivatives and debentures 
where you can invest depending upon how much risk you are ready to take in the market. Apart from that, there are mutual fund products and elect, uh, exchange traded funds which are available in this market. So whenever you decide that you will start investing your money, all your savings you will convert into investment, then it is always better to design a portfolio. So one should not put all your investment in one financial asset. For example, one should have a mix of uh, low risk instruments, medium risk instrument and high risk financial assets so that anyone's returns can be maximized and a risk return trade off can be maintained. So you should have uh, as an investor when you are investing your total money, you should invest in saving bank account, keep some money in the saving bank account to meet up with the uh, contingencies. Some amount should be invested in a fixed deposit. Depending on how much risk you are ready to take as an investor, you should understand your risk profile. So if you are uh, an investor who doesn't want to take much risk, then you should go for, let's say, 80% of your portfolio in a risk-free uh, investment portfolio and 20% can be in risky portfolio. It also depends on your experience, your age and uh, what other uh, financial goals you have set for yourself. So all of these factors affect. Then you can invest some money in the provident fund because they are secure government uh, uh, alternatives where your money will be safe but the returns are very less uh, which will be inflation adjusted and your real returns will be literally very low. Uh, then people do invest in gold because gold is considered to be a safe haven and uh, it is real assets in which people invest. Then there are exchange traded funds, mutual fund. So some little investment you must do in mutual fund or exchange traded fund where you do not want to, you know, you want some regular returns and you do not want your portfolio uh, to be revised every little time, uh, uh, every now and then. And you do not want, you want to be, a, you want to have a carefree investment, which is giving little higher return, let's say up around 12% or so. And whatever is the remaining amount, with depending upon how much risk you are ready to take, you can invest your money in the stock market. So that's how, let's say, somebody wants to invest uh, uh, 3 lakh rupees per year and then they can decide that in these 6 or 7 instruments, which are depending upon the risk profile uh, from low risk to high risk, one can decide that which, uh, how much money one would put into that particular investment. So whatever amount of money you will allocate to a risky asset, uh, that is the stock market, it should be further invested in a portfolio. So first portfolio designing is that where you will invest your total savings. After that, whatever money you will allocate to stock market, let's say you have allocated 1 lakh rupees to the, for the investment in the stock market. So there are some basic tips of designing a portfolio in, uh, for the, in the stock market investment. For designing a portfolio of let's say uh, whatever amount it's let it be 50,000 or 10,000 or 1 lakh rupees which you want to invest in the stock market then uh, again you should keep some amount of liquidity uh, which is attached to your DMAT account and your bank account which are interlinked with each other. So some amount of let's say 25% of the total investment in the stock market you must keep as a liquid reserve money. Why I am saying so? Because uh, in case of any contingency, in case of any opportunities which you know any time can come up, uh, you can encash them with that liquidity. So if you want to invest 1 lakh rupees in the stock market and you invest in one go all the money, then uh, whenever an opportunity will come, you will miss that you know if I would have some more fund, I would have invested the money. And then uh, let's say 25% uh, you have invested in the, you have kept as liquid uh, funds with you in the in the uh, in your stock uh, trading account rest of the amount should be invested in a portfolio now the portfolio which you are going to design for stock market investment uh, the rule general rule is that you should not invest your money uh, not more than 25% of your investment in one go should go to one particular sector so there are various sectors in the stock market so uh, of, out of all the listed companies in uh, the stock exchange, uh, they are divided into various industrial sectors. So one particular sector should not have more than 25% of your investment. So these are some basic rules which you will, if you design, de define for yourself as a, and maintain discipline towards it, your loss towards 
any unforeseen uncertain event in the stock market can be minimized. So, one rule is that do not invest more than 25 percent in one particular sector. Second is that in a particular sector, one company should not have more than 10 percent of your total investment. So, your total investment should not be uh, uh, more than 10 percent in one particular stock. Howsoever good that stock is, howsoever uh, you know returns, how good uh, returns that stock is providing, till then you have to maintain that discipline and that uh, you know patience with yourself uh, and control your greediness that you will not invest more than 10 percent in any particular stock or a company uh, out of an industrial sector. So, like this if you have let us say uh, 100 rupees, so you will not invest more than 10, uh, so you will have a portfolio of 10 to 15 companies uh, in total in your uh, portfolio of stock market investment whatever is the amount 1 lakh or 50,000 what you want to invest. Uh, so, why it is uh, the portfolio needs to be designed? Because uh, when you design a portfolio, you, it can happen that you know when you let us say buy uh, shares of a particular sector and that sector is not performing good. So, if all your money will be invested in one particular sector, you will incur huge losses in the market. But if you have designed your portfolio in such a way that your total money is invested in let us say not more than 25 percent in one particular sector. So, if one sector is performing bad, maybe there is another sector which is performing good and there is another sector which is performing super uh, good. So, in that case uh, your returns will be adjusted, losses from one sector will be offset by the uh, you know extra returns which you will get from another sector and that way your average returns overall will come out to be good. And that is the rule which applies to companies as well that if one company is not performing good uh, and you have not invested and you as a rule you have not invested more than 10 percent in that company. So, only 10 percent of your investment will be into losses and rest uh, other sector other company will be performing good, some other company will be performing bad and other company will be performing good. So, like this your portfolio will be balanced out and you will have a fair amount of average returns from the stock market and you will not incur. Uh, much losses uh, rather than a situation when you have invested all your money emotionally in one particular company or in one particular sector that can cause you huge amount of risk which you are taking. Whenever the market is bearish, if you have targeted some quality stock, let us say you keep on reading about stocks and you have identified that there are some good quality stocks and you are, but, but you feel that you know they are highly uh, priced and they are very costly to buy and you cannot afford to buy those stocks. So, whenever the market is bearish, bearish as I told you earlier that bearish is that when market is falling and all the stocks or that particular company stock is falling due to some reason. So, and due to that reason the price of the share has come down and you are already watching that particular stock. So, if there is a good quality stock which you are targeting which you are interested in buying and you find that in the bearish market the stock price has come down. So, it is the right time to buy. Let us say you do not have that stock and you find that the price is low you buy it at the right time. So, for that purpose that uh, you know extra spare liquid cash which you have maintained in your uh, bank account linked with the DMAT account that money will be used at that point of time where everybody else feel that the market is not performing good, it is bearish market and one should not invest. So, that is the time where you can uh, encash that opportunity and buy that best share which you always wanted to buy at the at a very low price. Uh, another tip is that one should have returns predefined for exit. Now, one should not always feel attached or you know you should not uh, uh, be uh, emotionally attached or there should not be any endowment bias which you can have uh, with your stocks that if you have uh, associated yourself with a company you will never sell it. Now, there are ups and downs in the market. Market is highly volatile and whenever uh, after a certain time period it happens that a stock starts giving you very good return then a point will come that the stock will start falling and again correction will come and again that market will go up. So, you have to wait for the right opportunity. As an investor your target should be because your target is to earn returns from this market. So, when you should keep some 
uh, returns target. Let us say you have kept yourself a target of 18 percent. So, whenever a particular stock will give you let us say returns of 18 percent, so without having any kind of endowment bias, you would like to, you, ha you should sell that stock. You should exit at the right time because it may happen that you have purchased a stock for 100 rupees. After 2-3 years, it has gone to 500 rupees. You feel that you know, let now it has gone to 500, I will wait for an opportunity when it will go to 800. You should not wait like that. So, whenever your stock has given you the appropriate target uh, of returns which you were expecting, you must exit out of that stock. And thus, the money which you have taken out from that stock, uh, you uh, keep on rotating it again in the market. And if the, that stock was too good that you never wanted to lose that stock, so whenever again the market uh, will come, uh, the, the prices will come down for that company which you sold earlier, you can again buy it at a, uh, again at a reasonable price. So, whatever you have invested in the market, once you have earned enough return, then use the, uh, your returns to earn extra income. Now, uh, some people uh, adopt this philosophy and I really like it that, you know, let us say you have invested 50,000 rupees in the stock market. So, that is your initial investment. You will allow your investment to grow. Once your investment, let us say, has earned uh, another 80,000 rupees, your 50,000 rupees has grown up to uh, 80,000 rupees. So, what you can do? You can take out your 30,000 and let that portfolio, uh, you know, uh, exist for 50,000. After that, again, some good returns have come to your stock and your portfolio, which was uh, 50,000 has gone up to uh, 1 lakh rupees. So, take out your 50,000, which was your initial investment and let your returns only, which you have earned from this market, play in the market. Now, this will give you a lot of satisfaction in terms of that, you know, it is not your money which you are uh, uh, you are playing with in the market or you have invested or which is earning for you, but you will find that uh, uh, it is the money which uh, has uh, grown itself. Another important thing for an investor that whenever you have invested in a, a portfolio, keep on uh, revising and reviewing your portfolio in every, let us say, two to three times a year for any changes in the market, for any changes that has happened in the company, whether the company's health is sound and the company is performing good, just have a review and again uh, start with your investment. One should always try to uh, buy undervalued stock as they will give you better returns in the market. So, the rule is that if you are an intelligent and smart investor, then 75 percent of your time, your investment decisions will be correct. So, your portfolio will balance out your returns from such diversification and manage your risk in the stock market. Now, another important aspect is which companies to invest. How do we decide as an investor that which companies we should invest in? Now, each one of us wants to invest in company which give us good return and maximize our wealth. So, to pick up uh, good stocks, there are certain rules which you can uh, always keep in mind. Identify growing and futuristic companies. How to do that? How to identify that which companies are growing, which companies have are futuristic and have a futuristic uh, uh, scenario. Now, look at the life around you. Look at the brands which you are using in your home, in your offices, in your routine life. Let us say take, talking from toothpaste to soap to groceries, eatables, stationery, clothes. Find out which brands you like. Look at those brands which you have been using for last 10-15 years of your life. Let us say Colgate or uh, you know Maggie and Nestle products, Cadbury chocolates, uh, some stationery items or uh, Maruti cars. Which brands you think that your future generation is also going to use for next 15 years? Let us say products of Johnson & Johnson and uh, which products your kids are going to use? So, identify all those companies. So, since those companies have remained in business for last 15 years and you feel that they have a future in next 15 years to come, that means those stocks are going to stay. Those companies are going to stay. They are not going to lose business at any point of time. Look at your future generation because India is highly populated uh, country and we have uh, a lot of young children around. Look at your kids. What kind of toys they are buying? Which brands are more popular amongst them? Which stationery items they buy? Which brand of notebooks, pen, pencils they are using? So, those are the brands which are going to stay 
in the times to come in near future will have good growth with have good 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 sales which restaurants are always overcrowded which brands which hotels are always sought after for or have very good reviews or people are visiting those places again and again so they are the brands which are right for you for investment from growth perspective if you look at the cars and uh, two wheelers around so if you want to buy stocks of automobile companies or car uh, brands or tire companies or uh, let's say uh, paint and uh, uh, other uh, such brands so look at which cars are more popular nowadays whether it is honda cars or maruti cars or hyundai cars or uh, bmw or whatever uh, brand you see around so the cars which are more popular at any point of time they are the brands which are selling better they are the brands which are going to earn higher profit during the year so these are the shares which are going to rise in future and that's how you should decide about that you know which shares you have to buy also look at that you know which brands you like let's say for clothes if you go to a mall which stores have a uh, huge amount of crowd uh, for buying clothes which brands of clothes you actually like your generation of uh, people of your age likes after deciding about these uh, list of these companies you also look at which sector is going to have a bright future in times to come now how to identify it there are a lot of sectors which depending upon whatever problems we are facing today are uh, giving a very futuristic and growth perspective for example with the kind of air pollution we are having we could see growth prospect of air purifier companies microfinance banking has uh, come up in a big way so microfinance banking really has a future because there is lot of population in india which is not getting the right uh, opportunity and and services from for with the banking sector online shopping because of lot of traffic uh, things and with the internet technology coming in we see that online shopping brands like uh, mintra jabong amazon.com flipkart all of these have become very popular so these are the stocks which are going to be the future of the nation and one can always think of investing in Flu- food delivery consumption companies like uh, swiggy zomato Uh, Uber Eats. So all of these also have uh, are are you know the, have an increasing trend of sales. Solar technology companies because solar technology is something which India and other countries of the world are going to adopt. So those who are front runners in solar technology, they are the companies whose stocks, if you buy, will be a good choice in years to come. now electric vehicle is something which uh, uh, a lot of companies have started coming up with and it is the future uh, technology which we are going to use so such automobile companies which are related with uh, electric vehicle businesses and into electric vehicles so they are ha- they are going to have a bright future and one can always look at their future growth in next 5 years and it can be some future company which you can select then big data and research firms are also very popular uh nowadays because everything becoming online and electronic and with this internet technology and aadhar and everything all personal information has been collected in a data form uh, by all of the companies whose apps which we are uh, we are using so how those data can be utilized for further uh, research purposes for further sales and uh, marketing purposes so that's a big business networking and companies having public data so there are a lot of companies who have huge amount of public data like nokri.com jeevansathi.com and many such other firms and then social media companies which like whatsapp facebook so all of them have so much of our personal data and they are going to be the future technology youtube google all of these are uh, the future companies to invest in then entertainment industry where lot of our youth we we see our changing habits and pattern of investment we see entertainment industry is one where people have started spending lot of money again another concern with the, which is growing up uh, with people is uh, organic lifestyle and health related brands so that's a great business to invest then environment is another big concern so climate change environment protection and uh, so all brands which are related to such kind of businesses would be a good bet to invest in now which companies are the best one in the sectors which you have identified so once you have identified a futuristic sector which is growing which has a future in times to come or a brand which has which has stayed 
for all these years and is going to have a future in years to come so you have to identify which company out of that sector you have to invest in now each sector would have some best companies so you have to identify a company which gives you the highest competitive advantage which is moving ahead in times in terms of technology innovation so choose a company which has a competitive advantage as compared to the others so which has some unique selling proposition uh, so that is the company where you will feel that you know shares uh, can move or the, the returns can be really good now these companies which you will identify can be top reputed blue chip companies or these can be mid cap or small cap companies in the same sector now once you have identify some companies you also should screen for uh, of um, companies for further research now whenever you are screening companies for some further research you should look at some factors like whether the company is earning consistent profit so choose any company which is high having high growth in profit how much is the return of investment uh, return on investment of the company so one should pick up companies which have very high return on investment so every rupee which you invest in the company how much return the company is giving you uh, at the end of the year so any company which is giving you a return from 10 to 20% as an investor is a right bet for you to invest uh, in that company choose companies which have no or very little debt because debt is something which will lead to insolvency of a company and this will ensure long term survival of the company if you will choose a company which has very little debt with themselves another important criteria is ethical conduct of company whether the management of the company is involved in some court cases or frauds or unethical behavior or not following the corporate governance norm one should not go for such companies for example we have uh, heard about uh, you know pnb scam or some other uh, frauds ilfs fraud so if you understand if you look at and find out any such fraud talked about any of these company you should reject that company outrightly after this you should look at the competitive advantage the company which you are trying to pick up is it giving you any is is that company has any competitive advantage through which we will see that you know that company will have always an edge over other uh, competitors then you should carry out fundamental analysis how to do fundamental analysis one should look at the industry analysis and a future of that sector then as already discussed look at the competitive advantage innovative practices uh, of that company look at the management who's the management of the company how well the management has uh, performed in the past and how what do you predict in the future look at the operating leverage operating leverage is very important point when you are investing in a company looking at the cost efficiency if the company is able to uh, you know give you returns uh, good returns by uh, with the lot of cost efficiency it is a good company apart from that look at economies of scale look at companies which are into a business where uh, there is fixed cost involved and then any extra uh, uh, you know increase in sales uh, will give them additional advantage on that uh, on that uh, reducing fixed cost so the, the the concept of economies of scale and operating cost must be checked with the company which sector you are ready to buy there are certain ratios which you must look at when you are investing your uh, money Uh, one important ratio is earning per share earning per share is how much income you have earned how much earning you have earned on per share uh, of the company so higher is the earning per share better is it is for you to invest in that company another important ratio is price earning ratio this ratio reflects investors assessment of those future earnings you can determine the share price of the company stock and divide it by eps to obtain the price earning ratio so the formula is market price divided by earning per share and you should also look at the sector pe to compare with when you are deciding about it and a third important ratio is price earning growth ratio this represents today's pe along with future growth potential it is time value of price earning so price earning ratio divided by earning growth ideal P, uh, peg ratio is uh, it tends to 1 so if your earning is coming similar to or is coming up to the level of the uh, price earning ratio that means the growth prospect of the company is bright and what should invest in such a company a peg ratio less than 0.5 is a strong buy recommendation because the company is growing faster than what it has earned till now 
and a peg ratio greater than 1 or 2 has strong cell recommendation. But one must understand that this growth, uh, the denominator in this uh, formula is a forecasted figure. So from where that forecast has come, there, there, there can be issues related to it. Fourth important ratio is debt equity ratio, how much borrowed capital the company has. So that also will make an impact. So debt equity ratio should also be low for the companies whose share you are ready to buy. Fifth ratio is price to book value ratio. It is calculated as market price divided by the book value. Sixth important ratio is enterprise value divided by earning before interest, depreciation and uh, uh, taxes. It, this ratio compares the company's market capitalization with the gross profit because growth of the company is also affected by the investment of borrowed funds. So enterprise value is calculated as equity shares minus borrowed capital. So this ratio takes care of gross profit rather than other ratios which have taken care of net profit into consideration. Lower ratio is considered to be good and if it is as close to as 1, it is considered to be good. Now check intrinsic value of stocks and buy those stocks which are undervalued. Look at the price earning ratio which is calculated as market price divided by earning. A low price earning ratio shows undervalued stock which will give you good returns or will maximize your returns in future. Any price earning ratio below 15 is a good deal. Price uh, second important ratio for identifying uh, value in uh, stocks is price to book value ratio. It is calculated as market price divided by the book value. So book value is calculated as assets minus outside liabilities. A lower price to book value ratio can have better margin of safety. So will give higher returns to any value. So any value below uh, for price to book value ratio below 1.5 can give good returns. Another way of choosing stocks, value stocks is to see the 52 week high and low and start with the stocks which have uh, reached to the level of uh, that. Now let us talk about value investing. So value investing as an investment strategy involves picking up those stocks that appear to be trading for less than their intrinsic or book value. So it was uh, this concept was given by Benjamin Graham and David Dodd in 1934. So value investors actively ferret out stocks that they think that stock market is underestimating. Now value investors use financial analysis. They do not follow the herd mentality and they are long term investors of quality companies. So what is the valuation? Uh, why is the valuation of company low? Because these value investors are looking at undervalued stock. So when they are looking at undervalued stock, now we have to understand that why do a company will have low value? It can be a temporary case because of which the company has uh, you know faced some temporary crisis because of which the value is low. For example, we knew few years ago Nestle had a problem related to Maggi that it could not uh, fulfill the food standards. So you know sales of Maggi went down but that does not mean that you know Maggi uh, Nestle share is not good uh, to buy. Because we know that the brand is the company is not going to close because of uh, just because of Maggie. So, because the share price of Nestle went down at that point of time, an undervalued in a, a, a value investor would look at such undervalued stock, which is otherwise very good quality stock, but due to a small crisis, it has it is temporarily having a lower price. And you will, uh, you know, you should uh, as a value investor should invest in that stock. Sometimes we hear about the new uh, Maruti has uh, gone some labor strike or there is strike or lockout in some other company which is a temporary thing because of which uh, sometimes for few days for one day or two days the stock price comes down. So if you are already keeping an eye on those stocks and that stock price has come down and you understand that the problem is temporary one should invest in those stocks. Uh, it does not mean that you know uh, value investing does not mean that one should only look at uh, small or mid cap stocks. One can also identify undervalued stock in the uh, top 100 companies or the blue chip companies also. 
uh, one should look at that if there is panic in any industry as a value investor. So, whenever there is panic in any industry, it can happen for a short period of time. Uh, uh, the stock uh, value has gone down or the prices are, uh, are down and then one can look at uh, buying the stock at that price. Now, uh, uh, talking about contrarian investor. Now, contrarian investor is somebody who always will go against the market. Now, market has a certain behavior. People are buying, let us say, when uh, a buying spree comes, everybody is buying shares, buying shares and the stock market starts moving up and we say that it is a bullish, bullish phase which has come. So, if market is buying certain stock and is giving a good indicator that you know these stocks are doing really well and one should invest in these stocks. So, there are people who are known as contrarian investors. They are those people who will never buy the stock when uh, somebody will say when everybody is buying it because it is the time that you know it is the time to sell those stocks because the stocks prices will go up. When everybody is ready to buy, everybody is buying a particular stock or everybody is buying shares in the stock market, a contrarian investor will always sell. And whenever it is a down phase or it is a bearish phase in the market, everybody is uh, saying negative things about the market and the market is doing bad and the companies are, prices are going on, uh, going down and everybody feels that the things are gloomy. So, uh, contrarian investor at that time will always uh, buy the share. So, big investors like Warren Buffet and uh, uh, Benjamin uh, Graham, so all of these have been uh, uh, contrarian investors. Now, look at, uh, let us see this table which talks about that how contrarian investment works. Now, what happens? You have a perception, you have a positive perception about a company. Now, market also predicts or the whole market scenario feels that you know that share is very good, the company is very good, it has a growth prospect and has a positive view point about that share. And at the end of the year, so you buy the share and at the end of the year, company also performs good. So, the uh, performance is positive. So, how much return you will get? You will earn moderate returns from the stock because when you had a positive impression about the company, positive perception about the company and everybody else had a positive perception about that share. So, the share prices went up and you were buying an overpriced share. Second scenario can be that you have a positive perception about a share and market also views a positive perception, but the company performance is negative. So, if market is viewing something as positive, so you have purchased a share which is highly priced because everybody else has uh, made its price to a higher level. But the company has negatively performed, company's profit have gone down or something wrong has happened with the company. So, you will incur huge losses because already you purchased that share at a very high price. Third scenario can be that your perception about a company's share is positive. But market feels that you know that company is not good, nobody is saying a buy recommendation for that company and people are rather moving out of that company and you feel that you know company is promising has good growth perspective. So, uh, the performance of the com and the performance of the company comes out to be negative. Market was correct, you were wrong and market said uh, company will behave negative and the company is not good and company performed negative. You will incur losses, but your losses will be lesser than the previous situation because you have already purchased that share at a low price. So, you will be able to have only a moderate level of loss. Fourth scenario can be that your perception about the market is about that company is positive, but market understands that this company is not a good investment choice and they have a negative perception about it because of which everybody is selling the share and you could buy the share at a very good, very low price. And uh, at the end of the year, company gives positive results. Company is earning good profit, is has performed good and people start having a positive impression about the company. Now, you have earned huge profit in this scenario. So, as a contrarian investor, you can be in a scenario that where people are thinking negative about a company and you have a positive impression about perception about that company and you end up earning if the company performs good, you will earn high profit in that case. So, that is how value investors work, that is how contrarian investors work. So, contrarian investors goes against the market.
when everyone is selling they would buy and when everyone is buying they would sell in the market now as a risky investor you have to think why people are negative have negative perception about a company and if you are convinced that you have a positive perception and your calculation is right then you should buy that stock but one thing you should keep in mind that whenever you are investing in any such company you should be ready to lose you should invest only that amount of money which you are ready to lose because it cannot be possible that 90% of people whatever they are thinking if they are thinking negative about a company and you think that that company is good uh, that that company will be good only because they also have done lot of analysis and research behind and that's how they have decided that the company is not performing good so you must be ready to take that risk because it can happen that uh, you know because of recency bias or because of something recent which has happened to that company people may think that the share was not good but you have a forward looking thinking and you have a second level of thinking because of which you have decided that the share is good and you feel that one should invest so you must always go with what is your analysis so if you think that fundamentally a company is good a company has a uh, good performance good growth prospect it may be possible at the right point of time it's not performing good but the future is bright so you can stay invested with that company over a long period of time and even if as a contrarian investor let's say you have invested in 10 stocks and let's say seven times you are wrong only three times you are correct it may happen that uh, it 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 can happen that uh, even if you are correct three times and seven times you were wrong your losses of the seven companies will be offset by the gains which you will get in the three big companies uh apart from that uh what to do when market crashes like today's scenario when the when you know uh, the budget has come and the market has a negative perception about it and the market is going down from last many months we are seeing and after this uh, budget uh, declaration the market is further very volatile and down so how do we do how do we behave as an uh, in this downward market how do we invest in this downward market uh first step is that one should behave like owners what would an owner do when the times are bad will they start disinvesting no an owner will stay invested in the company rather he would buy the share more so that his ownership can increase in the company so whenever markets are down it is the right time to keep patience it is the right time to be emotionally balanced not look at what herd mentality is saying you must understand that you know stock market is not going to end the whole uh, the whole financial market is not going to crash even if anything bad has happened the market will revive so if you know that the markets are not going to Uh, go down or the banks are not going to close or you know all all these uh, companies nestle hul all of these are not going to close down maruti is not going to close down so why to fear so whenever market are going through a down phase uh, you should look at you know uh, you should look at the brighter side of it you should encash this opportunity by buying more shares so you, there can be certain quality stocks which you had thought of buying but were highly priced and when the market is going down they will come to a very low level they will come to a level where you feel that they are undervalued now so it is the right time to invest so if you have kept some little liquidity with you for such times when you know market crashes you do not liquidate your previous investments but you uh, bring in more money into the market and buy those shares which everybody else is selling so it is the right time and everybody else is selling it is the right time for any value investor for a contrarian investor to invest in this market also look at the 52 weeks low price uh, check for those companies it is the right time to buy so if the 52 52 week low price any stock has touched that level so at at least that can give one indication not the exact the complete one but yes this is one indication that you know that stock can be a good buy so uh look at what others are doing if they are selling then you should buy when market is down use it for averaging your portfolio what can happen you already have uh, let's say icici bank shares and the market is down icici bank has come to a 
very low level let's say 52 week low level and you feel that now this stock is undervalued now if you have identified that stock is undervalued and you can pump in more money into the uh, in your investments so you should buy icc stock so you already have that stock at a high price now you have bought it at a low price so your average price of total icic holdings will uh, come little down and this will give you better returns when you will uh, you will see uh, that the market is good now is it that you know you should always buy when the market is uh, going down uh, you should look at you now there can be three scenarios either you hold the share or you sell it or you average out the price now if uh, these uh, prices have come down for a particular share in the uh, in the market then look at that whether it is because of some permanent problem that has happened with the company like something uh, which happened with ILFS or uh, uh, we are not uh, sure and, and that uh, Anil Ambani has uh, for some of his company has filed bankruptcy. So, you should look at those shares if you uh, like the Satyam scam which has uh, which also happened. So, if you understand and identify such companies where there is a permanent problem one must exit. But if there is a te temporary problem or there is a panic situation or there is a you know it is just a turmoil that has come into the market because of which the stock is low it is always a good choice to buy the stock. So, one should invest in futuristic company there are few strategies you can follow one should look at the intrinsic value and buy the shares below the intrinsic value. So, whatever intrinsic value you will calculate you should see that uh, you can buy the shares at, at uh, that point of time. One should try to buy low and sell high and do not follow the herd. When the market buy you should sell and when the market sell you should buy. So, uh, a quick overview of some tips uh, to invest in the stock market. One should have clearly defined investment goal. One should choose investment assets based on your goals, timelines and your risk attitude. Uh, uh, an investor can start investing at a very young age and start doing it regularly. Based on your risk taking nature you can diversify your investments in different financial assets. Uh, while investing in the stock market one should do complete research uh, on, inv uh, on investing in a particular company and do not believe in rumors do not believe that you know now the banking sector will close or this is the end of the market and such kind of bad rumors which come to the market are never true because businesses are not going to close down economies are not going to close down the population will remain as it is and people will generate demand over years you should have patience and should not be greedy should keep on rotating your investments over uh, time take expert help before taking an investment decision uh, and then uh, look at the read more books use more online resources for improving your knowledge and understanding uh, the stock market that's all for today and thank you very much